Hi everyone and welcome to UBS Trending. I am your host, Anthony Pastore. Thank you so much for joining us today. So as we continue our conversation on the year ahead, today we're gonna to look at expectations for sustainable investing. This year, SI certainly has been in conversation from a search for opportunities in a bear market to regulatory focus with the SEC, Department of Labor, and of course, regulators around the world who are taking a closer look at SI and ESG strategies. So the question here is, how can investors find opportunities? We're gonna get into that right now with a guest that I know you're all very familiar with who's been here on the show with me before. Amanti Mohoudini, our Sustainable Investing Strategist with the Chief Investment Office. Amantia, thank you for joining us. Happy holidays. Good to see you. Happy holidays. Always a pleasure to join. It's a, it's a, it's a big topic and one that we've spoken about a few times in the past, uh, sustainable investing, of course. But we're taking at it, uh, we're looking at it from a lens of the year ahead and even perhaps the decade ahead as so much is going to be changing over the course of the next few years. But as part of the broader research at CAO, I know that be, be, with the year ahead, there was an SI portion of that publication. So before we get in on what's gonna happen for next year, you, we have talked about sustainability on this show in the past um, as a longer term investment idea. So give us a refresher, what does investing look like I don't know, for the next decade or so, because I think that's, people look down the road and they think about their longer term investing 10 years seems to be a good chunky time to talk about. Yeah, no, that's right. I mean, it does. And, and in, in particular, we came up as CIO with this idea of the 2020s as the decade of transformation. And it kind of made sense, right? We already, as we're entering the 2020s, we're seeing the trends of societal, uh, technological, environmental change coming up. And then, of course, 2020 uh, truly triggered and accelerated some trends. But so even as we're now going into 2023, we've seen we've seen some of these changes materialize from, from a policymaking environment, from, from a geopolitics environment technology as I said all of it is coming to bear and, and, and in a bear market unfortunately <laughs> pardon uh, the pun, right? yeah exactly pardon <laughs> the pun entirely unintentional here um, I think but but so even though as we've seen some challenges in the beginning of the 2020s we still have a positive secular view for the decade ahead and in this decade of transformation, of course, one of our core ideas is investing sustainably. Now, why? What does mm -hmm. it mean investing sustainably, which is the question we always discuss as when I come to join you on trending. Um, <laughs> the broad thesis here is that as society changes, as preferences change, as technology changes, and as we see more the impact of environmental transformation also uh, come, come to impact us, um, from an investment perspective, we see real opportunities around the companies that are providing solutions to some global challenges or questions that are that are in play. One of these examples, just to make it a little more specific, is think about agriculture. Think about the fact that population growth around the world will mean more people will need to be fed with the same amount of land. And therefore, opportunities emerge in companies around precision agriculture, mm -hmm. for example, that can get more agricultural yield out of the same parcel of land at a lower environmental footprint, hopefully. So that's one way in which we're thinking about these ideas. With that said, of course, the question is, well, what about performance? What mm -hmm. does it look like? How is That's this different? That's always the question, isn't it? It is always a question because we are in the We're investment investors. business. That's right. <laughs> exactly. And so the way that we think about performance is um, over a full investment cycle, we should expect sustainable investing strategies to perform at least similarly in diversified portfolios to traditional strategies. If we look backward even over the last five-year period, what we've seen across a range of indices and across a range of regions uh, as well as themes, um, we've seen that sustainable strategies are either outperforming or comparably performing, as I just mentioned, they're traditional indices. Over the last year, uh, there's been more volatility, more diversification. We should talk about that. But over the longer term, uh, the statement holds true in, 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 a, in a portfolio that has all of these um, exposures. Right, and you can see that in the chart, which yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's right, clearly right there in black and white and red uh, <laughs> as the UBS colors allow us to use. So, so it's, it's not, I think having the question of performance should be off the table going forward. We've already, it's been established, we talk about it, we see it in, in print, so it's, it's great that you bring it up again because it helps with the rest of the conversation which talks more about what to do in the now. So what do you say about 2023 for SI? Yeah, of course, I mean, critical questions here, and, and in part because it's important to position for next year, in part because you want to find entry points, uh, even as you're thinking about the decade ahead, mm -hmm. right? Um, 
As we think about SI, I think the core message here for our audience is that sustainability should be thought of in context of your broad investment objectives. So sustainability for 2023 does not look much different than our investment ideas from CIO for the year ahead. For example, we are advising clients to position in defensives and value. We're seeing this next year as the year of inflection, where towards the end of the year, we expect um, the environment to change so that it's more uh, welcoming or more uh, positive for risk assets, right? But we're still saying, think about defensives, think about healthcare and consumer staples, which CIO broadly likes at the moment. What this means for sustainable investors is look for those strategies that have an over allocation to companies around healthcare, companies that are providing solutions that are aligned with healthcare related challenges, mm -hmm. right? That's one way to think about sustainability in the context of the existing CIO view. Another part, um, of our advice is position in value. And what that's meant has been a, a call for the traditional energy sector. Now here, uh, saying uh, invest more in traditional energy is maybe challenging from a sustainability perspective. And here our advice for clients who want that exposure is to be very intentional and purposeful. We've talked before about how if we think about climate change, the transition to different forms of energy, traditional uh, oil and gas majors are going to be part of that story. And so for, for clients and investors who want that exposure today, what's important is to say, who are, who are those companies that are improving in how they're positioning for this decade ahead? That's right. Do they, are they investing their capex, uh, their capital expenditure right, budgets in, in carbon capture, for example, that will be part of this story? That's what a lot of... Uh, the kind of the US companies are doing? Or are they repositioning their business lines so that they're adding renewable energy capacity and turning themselves into energy companies? They're not just fossil fuel companies, right? That's another kind of subset of energy companies. Asking these questions, having this lens, can allow investors to have this value exposure if it's intentional and purposeful in sustainability focused strategies. And right. now, finally, um, equities, right? We're talking about equities. This year, easier concept to understand. Easier right? concept, but fixed income is back now, and That's fixed right. income brings some income, as everyone has been saying. Um, what does fixed income mean for SI? Well, for us, Fixed income can mean invest in those um, strategies that are focused on green, social, and sustainability bonds. Bonds where the use of proceeds that is being raised from the market is going to finance uh, social or, 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 or green environmental projects, like making a building more energy efficient. Mm -hmm. um, however, even within this construct, this subset, the advice still stands. We like shorter tenures, we like higher quality, uh, and we like kind of taking some, some positions that are a little bit riskier than traditional benchmarks. It all all works together in a, in a diversified portfolio. Yeah. Perfectly. Yeah, and I think part of why it works together is, as we always say, sustainable investing is not a fund, it's not a product, it's not a thing someone can sell you. Sustainable investing is an investment philosophy mm -hmm. that can be integrated across all asset classes, all sectors. So all of these conversations you're having with my colleagues in CIO. It's kind of perfect that out of all the ones we've done, this is the last one yeah. of the year ahead reports. It ties it all together, right? Um, but you know, but the question really, and I think a lot of viewers would probably ask this of you at any time, would say, well, what are the risks here? Because clearly there are risks. There's geopolitical risk always, but it seems to be with SI it might even be more, um, be more uh, of an impact. And then you've got, of course, central banks, inflation, even though we think it's maybe topped out at these levels, but it's still a factor. Mm -hmm. What do you say are the key risks for SI in the new year? Sure. I mean, great question. Um, so one of the questions that we're watching is to your point on central banks, right? Uh, we do expect that central banks will eventually slow down and then maybe uh, stop their pace of higher interest rates. But, uh, but re interest rates relatively will, will next year for most of the year will be higher than what they've been in the past. Mm -hmm. So one question that people who are focused on sustainability are, are asking is, well, with higher interest rates, are companies going to keep investing in those initiatives that will drive uh, sustainability outcomes forward, right, as, as it's more expensive to borrow effectively? Uh, or will expenditure continue um, in, in these areas? In other words, will those companies that are providing these services, will they be supported? And then the second question is regulatory action, geopolitics, politics, how does that evolve? Um, you opened, Anthony, with saying, with kind of naming the SEC, the Department of Labor, other regulators. A lot has happened this year. Um, rules have been proposed here in the US. Uh, the DOL just approved the rule. 
at a federal level to allow 401k plans to consider sustainability focused funds um, at a state level. There's a lot of debate on these topics. We're seeing this patchwork mm -hmm. every, everywhere. This will continue very likely into next year in part because a lot of these regulations and policies have been in draft this year or have just been approved but not yet kicked in. So in 2023, in 2024 as well, we're likely to see them either codify you know, uh, into law or start to kick in if they have already been codified. And that will mean a likely a period of adjustment as investors try to, to see across the world what's the impact here. Look beyond labels, look beyond kind of broad guidance, look at strategies and ask, what's the investment objective from a top-down perspective? Is it doing what my objective is with regards to sustainability and investing? Those should be the two core questions in the near term. We only have about 30 seconds, Amantia, but what's the advice to investors right now? I mean, that's a, probably a broad question, but Give us, the, give us the bullet there. I mean, think about what your objectives are, what these macro trends are, ask if your portfolio is capturing them, but also think about tax loss harvesting. We didn't talk about it. A lot of the losses in stocks and bonds this year have been painful, but they can create an opportunity to harvest tax losses and allow investors to position towards sustainability if they already are not, right? So, so it's actually an opportunity now to start pivoting to more of these strategies that can capture all of these trends and objectives and values all in one. Terrific. Amantia, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, what a great way to finish this year ahead series that we've been focusing on. And I know this is a conversation that we will continue to have in the new year and, uh, you know, universe willing the decade ahead as we sit here. So good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. Great. Too. Happy New Year. Happy and uh, thank you all for joining us. There's a lot more information on that year ahead report. You could find it at the website, ubs.com forward slash year ahead hyphen exclusive. And that's right there on your screen if you need it. Plus, you can follow UBS on social media. We're on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well. Plus, you can check out all of our past UBS trending episodes on demand. And as always, if you have any questions about your own portfolio, as we said, make sure to reach out to a financial advisor to have that conversation. Until next time, I'm Anthony Pastore. Have a great day, everybody, and remember to keep your eyes on what's trending. See you soon.